Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with one of the best decks to show your skill in Clash Royale. The number 17 player in the world is outplaying all of his opponents with a 2.6 Elixir quick card cycle. After you defend cheaply with knights, spear goblins, or bats, you can throw a miner in front of that to force out more Elixir from the opponent. And because all the cheap cards in this deck will generate positive Elixir trades on defense, you'll find a lot of opportunities to pressure your opponent with counter-pushing cards that they don't have Elixir to defend. And all it takes is one good minor bats or minor wall breakers push for this fast cycle deck to quickly spell game over for the opponent. Because all the cards in the deck are cheap, it's super flexible to accommodate any situation. So if your opponent spams at the start of the match and you need your seventh card, you can quickly get to it without any issues. Whenever I play fast cycle decks like this, it forces me to make a lot of decisions and it gets me better at the game. So let's go jump straight into some matches, improve at Clash Royale, and assert dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. Lots of love to everyone that's supporting the channel with creator code SIRTAG. Getting into the game against Pedro, I went in for Spear Goblins, he viciously countered it with a Baby Dragon. And whenever I see Baby Dragon, I'm thinking one of two things either Graveyard or a Golem deck. But after we see Tombstone, it is probably going to be Graveyard with almost 100% certainty. So I'm going to Miner here in the safe spot. I'm going to Fireball immediately on that Ice Wizard and try to lock onto the tower. No King Tower activation for you. In fact, you're going to go and Tornado it further back away from your tower because you do not want to deal with the Miner power. So this is a pretty good start for us. We're up a lot of damage, 500 to be in fact. And then I guess I can go for Wall Breakers here. Get you to go in for like a Baby Dragon or something. Oh no, no. Please, please, Wall Breaker, survive. Don't die to the Valkyrie. Let me get a Miner in front. Let me get a Miner in front. Yo, it's working! Until it wasn't. It was cool for a second. You guys saw the Wall Breakers find their way through the axes of the Valkyrie and almost linger enough, uh, long enough to get onto the tower. That would have been so funny. Anyway, well played by our opponent. Credit where credit is due. But we're still up a lot because we're able to get a Miner on the tower while he goes in for the graveyard and defend with a measly two elixir investment of bats. So if your opponent's going for a graveyard and single elixir, it's highly unlikely that they'll have enough elixir to go in for a poison with the graveyard and defend your stuff that you're applying aggression with. So if you have cheap bait cards and single elixir, always use them on the graveyard and make sure that your opponent, you know, is forced to either poison or eat a lot of damage on their tower. So what do we want to do here? Do I just go and continuously split wall breakers or do I split wall breakers on the other side? Because I don't want to give him a barbarian barrel or anything counter pushing with the baby dragon. Is he actually going to eat it? No, he's not going to. He uses tornado, but he did it like half committally. He's like, should I do it or should I not? And then he realized he should. And then he just took a really bad trade because we can go for bats and spear goblins again, minor on the other side and constantly apply aggression in both lanes. Because in this matchup, it's hard to get damage in one side when your opponent focuses on defending. So I'm trying to make sure that I can go opposite lane of my opponent, and that's exactly what we're accomplishing. So now he's going to be working on this left-hand side the entire game. But now when he defends the, the right-hand lane with baby dragons or whatever against our wall breakers and knights, he's not going to be able to get counter pushed. Like, he can't go in for a graveyard with that baby dragon. As you guys can see, that's how you're supposed to play this matchup. You're supposed to make your opponent miserable by outcycling them at all points in time. And it's really fun to do. Yo, he's starting to go in the full HP tower now. That's how tilted he is. I love it. So we can just go in for a casual spear goblins here with the cannon and then the knight and the tower. We should be able to kill everything. I might even just go in for another fireball here if I'm feeling really frisky, but I guess that wouldn't be the best play available for us. I'm going to go in for a cannon here so we can soak up some of the damage from the baby dragons. And I'm going to go bats and then I'm expecting him to go for another graveyard. So we're going to go in for a knight here. We'll probably go for a tornado. So I'm going to go for a lower spear goblin. So when he tornadoes on the bats, he's not able to hit everything at once. And that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted the spear goblins to stay safe out here. You see me? Oh, no tornado. So I should have dropped that in the back. I dropped that in the front in the most predictable placement. That was absolutely awful, but it didn't matter. He didn't get the ice wizard down fast enough because he didn't have enough elixir. Yo, this is such a fast cycle deck. It's absurd. He can't keep up with me right now. We're going insane. We're going in. Let's get it. I want those spear goblins to lock on the tower. Probably not going to happen, but we do force out a bit. If you drop your cannon here, it's able to casually kill the Valkyrie and then also make sure that it's able to tank for the baby dragon. So it's one of the best placements you could do. Can you go for wall breakers here so we can pull back the baby dragon so it doesn't lock onto our tower? I think that the baby dragon will lock onto our tower, so it's a little bit bad for me, especially because the knight is not putting enough work. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to drop my miner here. This game is getting really sketchy in the later stages because he has such a good matchup in the late game. But I might be able to fireball and log if I get one more hit. Oh, let's go! The Miner dug us a W, and you'll love to see it. This is such a fun deck to play, 
and it makes you better. As you guys could see, if I went in the same lane as him at the very start, and I continue to go in that left-hand lane, I definitely would have lost the match. But since I started to work on the right-hand side as soon as he got 800 damage in the left-hand lane, we started to wiggle away with a huge lead that he wasn't able to come back and crush us. Even though he had an amazing matchup in the later stages of the game, where he had a ton of splash damage for our bats and spear goblins. After that cycle circus of a game, now we're 7,300 in the world. Yo, we got a game against Rick. What's up, dude? Are you the community manager, Rick? Is that who you are? Are we playing against CR themselves? Probably not, but I'd like to imagine that. So I'm gonna go for wall breakers in the back and we'll see what he's up to. Whenever we see log, it's probably gonna be a fast cycle deck as well. So I'm geared up for an awesome game ahead. If I go for a miner, I don't think the wall breakers are gonna die. I'm pretty sure that the tower is targeting on top of the miner and the wall breaker connects. Let's go. If you guys hate log bait, this might be the deck for you. You've got a faster cycle and you will be mischievous at all points of time. It's hard for them to keep up with you, which is not something that you would say typically. Usually they're going to outcycle you with princesses at the river, goblin barrels on the tower, and then the dreaded rocket cycle to finish off the game. But now that is not the case. We are flipping the script. So I'm going to wall breakers. He's probably just going to go cannon or goblins. He's scared of me pre-logging, so he goes in for cannon for negative one trade, by the way. That's pretty cool. Maybe I can go bats and then pre-miner on top of his princess. Or maybe he just goes in for a mighty miner. I don't know what he's going to do. Are you serious right now, bro? So I'm going to miner here. I could pre-log goblins. That's really far back, so I can just drop bats on that and not have to respond with a log because I don't think you get a hit. Yo, you just wasted three elixir for two elixir. The plus one trade with the bats. That's what I'm talking about, baby. I'm going to go for wall breakers, and then I can go in for a knight here. And then the spear goblin is still alive, so I'm going to apply more aggression. This is hilarious. I'm just getting damage on every single side. This is giving emotional damage for our dude. The spear goblin's still alive. Oh my gosh. He's so tilted. He's so tilted. <laughs> spear goblin's going to touch the tower. Oh my goodness. How many hits? One more? Say it ain't so, bro. Say it ain't so. He is tilted. I love it. I'm going to go in for a log, and then I'm just going to defend with Spear Goblins because it's going to give us more counter push. Might as well do that when we're up, you know? Add a little bit more insult to injury. He's going to go in for a cannon. I don't think it counters both the wall breakers. Oh, it did. I really thought that that was the wrong placement. I thought he dropped it a little bit too high. Well, the Spear Goblins locked on the tower still. Wow. What, some things never change in this game. The Spear Goblins out here always destroying dreams. So we can fireball on goblins if we need to in the later stages, but I can't afford that in single. Yo, I can log or I can just chill. I guess I'm going to wait and then I'm going to log and then you're going to go in for a goblin barrel soon. Wait, if I go for cannon, did <laughs> you lose your mighty miner because you make a prediction that I'm going to drop units right on top of your princess that I just wasn't going to drop? That's awesome because now you're down a lot of elixir. If I go for bats here, it's going to be hard for you to counter this because you don't have mighty miner. If you can't kill my bats, what are you supposed to do? You have to go princess right into it? Oh my gosh, I'm going to spend so much elixir. I love this. He's crying. He's not having a good time. Oh my gosh. Maybe he's BMing me because he's getting rocket cycles on my tower. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I think he's not happy because he's, he's losing the game still by quite a bit. So we can go in for a fireball if we need to on top of the princess. Um, we'll see if he decides to do that. I'm going to go for spear goblins. We could pre-log the princess, but I want to play too risky out here. We go for the miner. We always want to make sure that the knight crosses the river. He's going to add a little bit more of a benefit for us. The knight crosses the river, then the HP of the knight is going to get added to the miner, so the miner can't get finished off for a while. We're going to go for pretty early bats just to finish those off. He's just going to continuously rocket cycle. Rocket really does need a nerf. It shouldn't do that amount of damage to towers. You should have to earn your tower damage, man. It's okay, though. Sometimes this does happen. We go for a knight. We're going to go for the miner again. He's probably going to go in for goblins, which is totally fine. Exactly what we expect. We'll be fireball, hopefully. We went for a mighty miner instead, which is a little bit worse for us because now we can start to rocket cycle like a madman. We are able to log that. That's an interesting placement. I didn't expect him to do that, to be honest. So he was just getting all his damage by rocketing. Like, literally every ounce of it. Kind of crazy to think about. We we'll go for a princess counter with spear goblins in the middle. Then we'll go for bats. He did use his mighty miner ability, so it's going to be a little bit harder for him to defend this. Especially if we can get multiple miners. Maybe the wall breakers can lock on the tower. I just want to beat a toxic rocket cycle player. Is that too much to ask for right now? Um, yeah, we're predicting the princess, but it doesn't kill it. So I need to go for a knight for one more shot, please. Nice. All right, so we got to go for a log. And then we got to go in for bats here because the bats need to be able to break through. And you go for a miner, but they're probably just going to die to goblins. So this is really, really tough. Try to go for a fireball and maybe we can hit goblins. We ended up getting predicted. Feels bad, man. He is DMing me like a crazy person right now. He is not a nice person. All right, we're going to go for bats here. We're going to go in for a log. I really want to beat this dirty BMer. I really want to beat this dirty rocket cycle BMer. Please, Clash Shroud, let me win. 
We're gonna fireball one more time. He's gonna go in for a princess. We need to be able to get enough damage. I'm gonna try to go for bats here. I'm gonna go in for wall breakers. And I'm gonna go for a miner. That doesn't do enough. That doesn't do enough. That doesn't do enough. You're gonna lose. All I need to do is fireball you once. And I walk away with a win. Please, fireball, come down fast enough. Let's go! <laughs> Feeding a dirty rocket cycle player that is BMing the entire match and only getting damage with his rockets. That is the most satisfying win ever. There's nothing worse than just getting rocketed the entire game while you sit there and watch just because of the amount of damage it does. And it's not like he even got a single unit on my tower to deal damage. It was just rockets. Usually when you play Miner Cycle, they can catch your Miner with an Ice Spear and then counter it with a Mighty Miner or Goblins. So that's why this matchup gets a little bit tricky in the later stages of the game. So jumping to the game against UF Minion from the Immortal Storm Clan. He also had a Sparky Banner. I'm really hoping he tries to blast through his Sparkies so we can just distract him perpetually. Really fun, always distracting Sparky with your spam bait deck. So I'm going to go for a Miner here. I think it might also be another Graveyard player. No, it's going to have Fisherman. Oh, this has got to be Royal Giant, 1 million percent RG. So not necessarily the deck I wanted to play against, but we'll make it work. We'll hopefully make this happen. Should I log on top of the Skeleton King so we can kill it before it clicks the ability? I think that's likely going to be our best bet. So we're currently up 500 damage. As you guys can see, there's a common theme with this deck. You always get a damage lead. Oh, wait, it's Golem. This is not what we thought at all. Jeez, a little bit sketchy, a little bit scary. I'm going to go for Wall Breakers because they cost less Elixir. And they also do more damage than Spear Goblins. And like, you know, it costs less Elixir than the Knight. The Knight is something that we want to kind of keep on defense in this situation. Because it is really bad. My opponent gets a good trade. So he's going to go in for a Lightning on the Cannon. Unfortunately, we got to go for Spear Goblins. And I can log on the Golem as it explodes. So then it doesn't do as much damage to our tower. I think I want to go in for a Miner and Wall Breakers. And then just log on top of the Golem. So then we can knock it back. Actually, I can't afford the log. It's fine. We may be able to take out his entire tower. Are you able to do that? Are you able to go in for a Golem Lightning and just all in me like a crazy person? Nah, I don't think you can. He's just like sacked his entire tower. This is fine. <laughs> the stark dichotomy between Log Bait players and Golem players. Log Bait players play defense the entire game as they rocket cycle you. Golem players go all in, balls to the walls, and hope that they take your tower. It's hilarious. They're both toxic for different reasons. So I'm going to get Spear Goblins down here, and if I can defend this, I should be able to win the game, right? He's going to try to go for a weird lightning, and it's not going to work. The cannon should be able to pulverize all of the skeletons from the Skeleton King, and then also the Phoenix is going to get distracted for a long period of time, allowing my tower to actually finish it off. So we won this game. Pretty fun stuff. I did not expect him to go balls to the walls offense like he did. A few seconds later. It looks like our homie simply isn't able to afford the lightning in time. And even if he did, we had so much stuff surrounding his tower that he was so dead. It's pretty ironic that the guy has lightning symbols in his name and his clan is Immortal Storm, but his lightning didn't come down in time. You would think that his lightning would be supercharged by all the synergy that he's got with his names. All right, we got a game against we chose. So we're gonna see what's happening. This guy's got lightning symbols. So you know what? We gotta give him the speedy plays right out of the start. So we're gonna go for our wall breakers and we'll see what he's up to. Ooh, tombstone. So is this gonna be a graveyard deck? Are you gonna be running something particularly saucy? Are you gonna be running something spicy? Usually when we see tombstone, it's graveyard. So that's what I'm expecting right now. Ooh, he's gonna go for a tornado. He really doesn't want that miner to start touching the tower a little bit more. He's like, stop it, it's 300 damage already. He missed the Spear Goblin, let's go. <laughs> this deck is so annoying to play against because I can outcycle his Tombstone and then he has to go for a Skeleton King or a Valkyrie. Wait, he's got Mini Pekka. Oh my gosh, this is not the graveyard deck that I was used to playing against. Oh, let's go. Dude, the fact that that locked onto your tower through an Executioner and Mini Pekka is baffling to me. I don't know how that happened, but I'll take it. The Executioner also locks onto the cannon, so it doesn't give him any damage. So he's going to have Tornado in this deck. I don't know if he's back to it, so I'm not going to mess around too much. I'm going to go for a Miner, and I'm going to go in for Bats. And I hope that some of the Bats go towards the tower. Yeah, he's going to be back to Tornado, so I just didn't want to give him the King's Activation. I felt like that was worth it. Do I go for Spear Goblins, or do I let that decay and retain more Elixir? I think I let that decay and retain more Elixir, and then go for Miner Wallbreakers on the other side, because now he's not going to have a good counter to that besides Barbro, and then he won't have Barbro and Cycle for the Wallbreakers, and he won't have Elixir because he dropped his Mini Pekka. So both of those are dropping the tower a little bit lower, and you love to see it. Because I can go in for Bats on top of the Graveyard quite easily. If you guys haven't done this before, always Bats in the Graveyard and Single Elixir. So easy to defend. And then I'm going to Miner here, because he has to defend the Bats. And then we can go for Spear Goblins on the other side at the exact same time. So constantly being at offense and keeping your elixir low and your opponent's elixir low is the secret to success with this deck. If you have cheap cards and you're constantly getting positive elixir trades because their cards are clunky and costing like four or five elixir of the executioner, then you're able to get a good trade with two elixir and then you're going to be able to spam on the other side when they don't have elixir. 
basically we're trying to keep their elixir low with cost efficient trades on defense and then because of that then they have no elixir to afford their defense to our units and that's how we play this and we're gonna go in for a minor here try to predict the executioner unfortunately it didn't come down fast enough but it's fine we can still fireball here always want to go opposite lane of the graveyard i think i've said this a million times i'm gonna say it a million more this is how you play against graveyard players I can go in for a knight here if we want to, or I can go in for wall breakers. That doesn't really matter to me. I think we can go in for uh, a knight and then wall breakers and maybe go in for a log because if we go for the log, then it's able to clean up the graveyard skeleton and clean up the phoenix egg. So I think that's just slightly better for us. I'm gonna miter here. I'm gonna go for spear goblins and I'm gonna go bats. I'm expecting him to try to go for a barbaro on the spear goblins and then he'll still have to deal with the bats. So I tried to make that prediction and make him force out even more elixir. So. I can go for a cannon here a little bit lower since it is able to kill the mini P.E.K.K.A. And then it will also aid our defense against every single like aggressive graveyard that he does. I'm going to go and pull back the mini P.E.K.K.A. so it can't get a shot on top of the cannon. So we can keep it alive a little bit longer. Then I'm going to go in for... Wait, the wall breaker's connected. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I really did not expect that value. That's insane. Jeez, dude. The constant split lane pressure with this deck is also just insane. I love the fact that I can do that. I'm going to miner here. He's going to expect me to go with the... Uh, executioner but i'm not i'm just gonna swerve him again and i'm gonna minor fireball and then try to cycle a couple more miners on him i think i'm back to a miner really soon so it's gonna give us a lot of value i think i'm gonna go spear goblins after the executioner locks on it's just a little bit better for us and then i can go in for probably just a miner here and then log on all the graveyard skeletons and watch as the phoenix gets decomposed and eaten alive yo i could take either tower at this point it doesn't matter i could pick whichever way i want to win and you know what? Your tower is Finn. GG, well played a piece out. There's nothing you can do. Even though our dude had some of the best defenses in the game with Executioner Tornado and Barbarrel Tombstone, he still wasn't able to stop the Cycle Circus. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an incredible rest of your day.